Hey guys, I had some requests to do a Draw My Life video, but I thought I would mix it up and draw my love story instead. I think you might find it a little interesting. It's a little sad, but it's also happy. Now this is my love story, and I think everyone has a unique and wonderful love story, but I just wanted to share mine. This is me. My full name is Heidi Summers, although most people call me by my nickname, Buff Bunny. I was born and raised in North Pole, Alaska, where it's Christmas every single day. <laughs> and by every day, I mean we have Christmas decorations up all year round in a lot of the places in North Pole, the grocery store, the fast food places, and I'm on good terms with Santa, so don't mess with me. <laughs> I was also homeschooled most of my life, so I was a little socially awkward, shy, sheltered, naive. I attended public school when I was 16, which was a big transition for me. I didn't understand a lot of things, especially slang. <laughs> um, similar to the movie Mean Girls, I actually ate my first lunch in the bathroom because I felt like I didn't fit in with anyone and I didn't know where to sit and who to hang out with, and I was really shy. And the first year was a bit rough, especially since I was dealing with some intestinal issues. I lost a lot of weight in a short amount of time, and I heard people calling me anti-anorexic behind my back. But a high school eventually got better for me. My senior year of high school, I had the biggest crush on a guy in my class. And that crush became my boyfriend, my first love, the first person you share many new emotions with, love, vulnerability, jealousy, excitement, passion. At 17 years old, I thought I had found the one. I was very happy until he started changing a lot. He started hanging out with the wrong people and getting involved with the wrong things, things I did not want to be a part of, and he began to lie treat me differently, call me ugly names, very ugly names. So I walked away. And I wouldn't say this broke me, but it did squish my heart. I couldn't understand how someone that used to be so kind could be so cruel. So I was single and started attending the university. I buried myself in textbooks to try and avoid the empty feeling that I had. Spending time with my friends and families really helped. Months went by and I started to feel myself again. I was finally at a place where I was happy. I was out with friends when I met someone. I thought I would give this relationship thing another try. I mean, not all guys are bad, right? I ended up dating this guy for about a year. He was funny and sweet and he told me he loved me. He was saying all the right things that every girl wants to hear. I thought to myself, I finally found a good guy that would treat me like a princess. But one day I find out about another girl. Not just one, but multiple girls. I tried to believe the lies he was telling me, but the proof was right there in front of my face. He admitted to his mistakes and apologized many times, called me crying, but I couldn't look at him the same way. I couldn't even look him in the eye. So I left the relationship. And I was really sad again. I began to question myself like so many other girls after being cheated on. What's wrong with me? Am I not pretty enough? Am I not funny enough? Was I not good enough? Maybe it was my fault. I didn't like this feeling. I didn't like these thoughts. All of these negative thoughts I was having about myself, I didn't like any of it. It was around this time I made a bold move of moving 4,000 miles away to San Antonio all by myself. Not because of the past hurt relationships I had, but just for adventure, to start somewhere new. I had no friends or family, and it was just me. It was really hard at first. I grew really lonely, and I turned to food as comfort. I went from 90 pounds at 4'11 to 135 in a short amount of time. I actually stopped weighing myself when I saw 135 on the scale because I didn't want to believe I was gaining that much weight. And I was actually at a pool party with, with friends one time, which I avoided, usually bikinis and pools. 
And I had a guy tell me in a very rude tone, your body needs some work. I mean, talk about kicking me when I was already down. Instead of going off and finding a boyfriend to make me feel secure again, I did something else. I swore off dating. I told myself I wasn't going to get into another relationship until I learned to love myself again. No more falling in love with other guys. I was going to fall for myself. Loving myself meant I was going to learn to love the imperfections, the awkward tendencies, and quirky habits that made me, me. To stop trying to impress others and start impressing myself. I was going to concentrate on myself and not date anyone for one full year. Get to know myself better, see what kind of person I am without having a boyfriend distracting me. That way, when I did start dating again, I would know exactly what I wanted in a man. Well, one year turned into three years. I didn't mean to go three years, but being, but after being single for so long, I became picky. Very picky. You see, when you take time getting to know yourself and loving yourself, you begin to see your worth and see what you deserve. What every female deserves. Healthy and happy relationships. Begin to see that you are worthy and you raise your standards. You won't settle for just anyone. You'll wait for the right person to walk into your life no matter how long it may take. One year, two years, three years. And I didn't want to waste my time dating guy after guy. Time is valuable and I wanted to use it wisely. So I traveled. I traveled to cities I've never been to. I made spontaneous decisions. I went skydiving, bungee jumping. I took up new hobbies. I volunteered. I started falling in love with the fitness lifestyle. I also started evaluating the people in my life that I called friends and realized that many of them weren't healthy relationships either. I wanted friends that treated me the same way I treated them, like family. Toxic friendships not only make us unhappy, but they corrupt our attitudes and our drive. They block you from expanding, elevating, and vibrating higher. So I had no problem cutting ties with people who gave me negative vibes. I can't tell you guys how much this changed my life. Learning to love myself unconditionally gave me freedom and happiness and confidence in myself. I learned that nobody is perfect and that it's okay that I'm not either. I learned that it's okay to be sad sometimes. It's okay to get hurt and go through hard times. It's okay to forgive those that hurt me in the past as well. I learned that I don't need to have a man in my life, but I would one day want a man in my life. When you need someone, you lose your independence as a human being because you rely on someone else. You lose the ability and desire to complete basic tasks by yourself. You forget what it's like to be alone with your thoughts. When you want someone in your life, it's because that person makes you happy and you enjoy being around them but you are still a complete person without them. So I don't need people in my life, but there are some people that I want in my life. People say that their significant other completes them. But what I want to know is why can't both people be complete on their own and come together to make one indestructible bond? So I was 22 years old when I met Josh. He showed me a photo of his bulldogs and he asked me for my phone number so he could send me the photo. Slick move, buddy. <laughs> he asked me to dinner and I jokingly told him that he had asked my dad's permission at 22 years old. My dad called me 15 minutes later at saying some southern gentleman messaged him. Do you want me to get rid of this guy? No, dad, I think he's all right. He actually asked my dad's permission to go to dinner with his 22-year-old daughter. Now that's the kind of guy I was waiting for. My love story is still being written, but Right now, I'm very happy. I've been dating my best friend for four years now, and we have an amazing dog named Neurotransmitter, and I strongly believe I would never be this happy if I didn't take that time to focus and love myself.